technically, Football Fridays ended last week as we prepared for Super Bowl 51. However, uh, no, we're not going to let it happen. Welcome, everybody. It's your Morning Minute on a Football Friday. Sean Drotar, Nate Lundy with you, 5280 Sports Network, MileHighSports.com as well. Um, today, uh, we talked about it on the radio show. You can go back and listen to some of that uh, and check out the podcast. Uh, download the 5280 Sports Network app. But we talked about that today is when th- the wheels start moving with certain players and things like that from a free agency standpoint, one of which is the fact that Russell Okung has a option for the team um, to extend out his contract. It's another four years, 40... Yeah, 40 roughly, roughly, yeah, it's roughly 12 million uh, a year. Million dollars. Um, and there's a decision that the Broncos have to make as free agency looms coming up here in a few weeks and what they want to do to try to improve the offensive line even before they get to the draft. Sean, is Russell Okung still an important part of this offensive line mix for 2017? Well... Yes, potentially, and, and that's only because the Broncos' offensive line was so bad. Behind Matt Paradis, there really wasn't any anyone that particularly stood out. Okung, I guess, might have been the best of the worst there. So I, th- I think there is some appeal, and he's not 30 yet. I think there's some appeal there. He's been a pro bowler. But I think the number is going to have to get to something the Broncos are more comfortable with, either long-term or they need to be able to find a way to get out from under the contract sooner rather than later. You remember, you can always move uh, Okung over to right tackle, where Donald Stevenson and uh, Michael Schofield, Tyson Bryle, everything they tried, nothing really worked over on that right side. So I think they do want to keep him, but there's going to have to be some finagling here. Remember, Okung also... Last year, he negotiated his own contract. Remains to be seen if he'd do that again, because a lot of people felt that was very team-friendly. So the Broncos might try to address that one more time. Well, and part of the team-friendly side of it is the fact that the Broncos are sitting on an option right now. They have until March 8th to decide what to do. As free agency opens up, I think that's what's going to dictate a lot of what... on March 9th. On yes. top of, so they have to make that decision before they get to see who they sign. Exactly. But they they all have a pretty good idea of who's going to be out there that they can talk to by the time they get to making the decision on Russell Okung. And who they talk to could also depend on how Russell Okung has a conversation with the team about what he's willing to do with the contract if the team doesn't want to extend it out as it sits right there. I think that there are some talented offensive linemen within free agency, and we also know from talking to our buddy Matt Miller at Bleacher Report, uh, as well as others, that it's not necessarily the strongest offensive line class that the NFL has seen in a draft in terms of recent years. There is some talent there, but not necessarily rising to the top, clear-cut guys that you know you can plug and play immediately into your offensive line. So I think that what the Broncos do in terms of trying to improve the line or doing things to the scheme to have it make sense with the players that they have is in part going to be affected by what they think they can do within the free agency because the draft is not necessarily going to plug those holes up immediately. So I think in terms of what the Broncos do from a free agent standpoint, that's going to dictate very much how that offensive line is going to look because I don't think you're going to see someone or some people pulled in from the draft that are going to immediately be ready to go by the time we get to September. Uh, on another note, Sean completely jinxed the Colorado Avalanche last night. Uh, as pointed out in yesterday's morning minute, the Broncos had a ch- or the Broncos, the Avalanche had a chance to have their first three-game winning streak of the season. I think it was the first time it had happened since 1972, as a matter of fact. Uh, however, uh, you said that, and then they promptly lost 4-1 to one to the Penguins. Yes, uh, I'm sorry when I was out there skating. I, I just didn't cover the slot particularly. Well, yeah, it's my fault. Come on. Yeah, it's your fault. They have one more than two games in a row you, all it's year. Lost your, it's your fault. You can't jinx somebody like that. You can't do that. Especially if you're not playing. Which I wasn't. It's like when you sit back, he hasn't missed a free throw all night. Clang! I mean, come on. You, know, you can't do that. You had to. You should have been talking about how uh, uh, there's something else. Well, I, I don't if that's know. the case, I'm going to use my eerie powers for other more enriching focuses over the you, weekend. You have eerie powers? I don't know. You say I do. What, what are they? I don't answer that. Uh, as you get into your weekend, folks, uh, have fun with friends and family. Get out and enjoy this gorgeous weather that's going on right now. Very unseasonably expected to uh, hit a record high today, as a matter of fact. So get out and enjoy it while you can, because you know coming up in a few weeks we will probably be really, really cold. And don't forget to shop for Valentine's Day. Yes, bellacala.com, bestdenverflowerdelivery.com. Check out our friends at Bellacala. Uh, for Sean, I'm Nate. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.